Spring Stated Meeting of the Presbytery of West Virginia will be held on Thursday, May 16th at Clifton Presbyterian Church in Max Walton, with Ronsford Presbyterian Church serving as co-host. It will also be accessible on Zoom. I'm Susan Sharp Campbell, Associate for Educational Ministry for the Presbytery, and in this video I hope to give you an overview of the work that we will be about together on the 16th. Please note that the video is not meant to replace reading all of the information in the advanced packet, as I'm only able to hit the highlights. While I encourage you to read the entire packet in advance of the meeting, I also encourage you to come not with your mind made up as to how you plan to vote, but with your mind and your heart open to the leading of the Spirit in our midst and to the voices of one another. Remember that as we gather in council such as this Presbytery meeting, we do so trusting that God's Spirit will be in our midst and lead us to discern where God is leading us. The advance packet was emailed to everyone on the Presbytery's newsletter mailing list and posted to the website www.wvpresbytery.org on May 6th. I encourage you to download the packet to your phone or tablet so you'll have it available for the meeting. As you can see, printing the packet for everyone would take a lot of paper, so we've gone to an electronic form. However, we also know that there are some who need a printed packet, so if you request a printed packet from the office at 304-744-7634 or office at wvpresbytery.org no later than Monday, May 13th, there will be a printed packet waiting for you when you check in at registration. If you're joining by Zoom, you may want to have two screens available or print the worship service and docket so as you can more easily follow along. One more thing to note before arriving at the meeting is that we have an opportunity to support the host church mission. Clifton has asked that we provide food items for its blessing box. These would include such things as canned soups, meats, fruits, or vegetables, especially those with pop-top lids peanut butter or other nut butters, applesauce, fruit cups, rice, beans, crackers, and or granola bars. As I walk through the day in the advanced packet, I'd encourage you to go ahead and download the packet to the device you'll be using during the meeting. If you've not already done so, you can more easily walk along with me as I walk through the packet if it's already downloaded. Looking at the packet itself, you'll note it's divided into two sections. The first section is the docket with the agenda and committee reports, and then the second section is the worship bulletin. Please note that items marked with an asterisk are orders of the day and will be taken up at the time indicated. On the 16th, plan to arrive at the church between 9 and 10 a.m. so you'll have time to check in, pay for lunch if you haven't already done so, turn in your food for the blessing box, and enjoy a time of fellowship and refreshments. If you're joining by Zoom, you'll be able to join beginning at 9.30 a.m. If you do join by Zoom, please be sure your name shows on the screen so that those taking attendance can note your presence. At 10 a.m., Don Adamy, moderator of the Presbytery, will call the meeting to order and lead us in an opening prayer. Stephen Baldwin, pastor of Clifton and Ronsford Presbyterian Churches, will then bring greetings from the churches. We will then move to some initial items of business. The first of these will be the acceding or approving giving the opportunity to speak to any corresponding members, that is, those who are ministers of word and sacrament who are members of other presbyteries. Ruling elders for whom this is their first presbytery meeting as a commissioner will then be recognized, including those joining by Zoom. At this point in the meeting, the presence of a quorum, if there is one, will be announced. The quorum for this meeting is 15% of our churches represented by a ruling elder, or 18 churches, and 15% of minister members, or 16. Once quorum is established, the docket for the day, which can be found on pages 1 and 2 of the advance packet, will be approved, followed by the consent agenda. The consent agenda on page 3 includes items that those planning for this meeting identified as not likely to generate discussion. However, if anyone wants to discuss an item found there, the request can be made to remove a particular item and it will be discussed later in the meeting. Items on the consent agenda for this meeting are approval of requests for excused absences, 
that the offering received during worship be sent to the Korean HANA Foundation. You'll find more information about this in the Mission Committee report. And the approval of five ruling elders to preside at communion in their churches of membership. Temporary clerks will then be appointed by the moderator to count any votes other than voice votes and pass out anything that needs to be distributed during the meeting. Those members of the leadership team who are present at the meeting will be appointed to serve as the Committee on Bills and Overtures and will take up any new business and make a recommendation on it at the end of the meeting. Please note that any new business to be introduced at this meeting must be given to the stated clerk prior to the lunch break. At each meeting of the Presbytery, there's an educational focus. For this meeting, the focus will be on the General Assembly and will be led by several commissioners to recent General Assemblies. Announcements will follow the educational focus before we move into a time of worship around the theme of Pentecost. You'll find the worship bulletin following page 34. If you're worshiping on Zoom, as I mentioned earlier, you may want to print the worship bulletin so you'll have easy access to it. We will be celebrating the sacrament of the Lord's Supper as part of worship. Please note that all bread will be gluten-free. I encourage those on Zoom to have some sort of bread and juice available so that you can partake as well. At the end of the bulletin, you'll find information on how to contribute to the offering other than contributing as the offering plate is passed. Please be sure to put May Presbytery Meeting on the memo line, whether contributing by mail and check or online and credit card. You'll also find information on our worship leaders and liturgy writer. Please be aware that if you wish to use any of the liturgy in your worship, you have permission to do so. Following worship, we will break for lunch. Again, if you have an item of new business, please be sure that the stated clerk has this prior to lunch. After lunch, we will be called back to order with prayer by the moderator before we resume the business of the day. The first item after lunch will be the report of Maureen Wright, stated clerk. On pages four and five, you will find her written report, which shares correspondence received and referred, and the statistical report for the Presbytery for 2023, which was compiled for information based on session statistical reports from congregations in the Presbytery. On page six of the advanced packet, you'll find the procedural matters that guide us as we meet together. Section A lifts up principles of parliamentary law, which include courtesy to all, one item at a time, majority rule, respect the rights of the minority, justice for all and partiality for none. These are all ways we show respect for one another as we seek to discern where God is leading us and as we make decisions. In general, these are guidelines for how to work and play well with others as we gather in community. As items are discussed, pro and con speakers will alternate with individuals being asked to identify their position. When one person has spoken on a pending question, all others wishing to speak will be heard before that person can speak again. Please note it takes special permission for anyone to speak on the same question more than twice. Section B contains provisions from the Presbytery's manual that guide us, including who has voice at this meeting, which means the privilege to speak, and who has voice and vote. Section C sets forth the procedural rules we follow. These include everyone speaking for whatever reason needs to go to a microphone, and when called on by the moderator, share their name, church, or relationship to the presbytery. Please don't assume that everyone can hear you from where you sit or that everyone knows who you are. If you're on Zoom and wish to speak, you'll need to raise your electronic hand or put your question in the chat. Here you will find that the limitation for debating any motion is 30 minutes per main motion, with each speaker limited to three minutes per speech, although this must be approved by two-thirds of those voting on the 16th. So as you read the packet, if you see an item you feel called to speak to, you may want to go ahead and write out your remarks to help you stay focused and use your time wisely. Finally, on page seven, you will find information on motion basics as we follow Robert's Rules of Orders Parliamentary Procedure. 
Maureen will then report as the transitional general presbyter. We will then move to the reports of the leadership team and presbytery committees. There are two parts to most of these reports. At the top of the page, you'll find any recommendations to be acted on on the 16th. Below any recommendations, you'll find information about the work the committee has been about since the last presbytery meeting. Please note that any recommendations coming from a committee do not require a second. The leadership team will be bringing a recommendation to update the geographic description of the presbytery in the manual of the presbytery. A change to the manual requires two readings at two meetings. As this is the second reading, we will act on it at this meeting. In the information section of the report, found on pages 8 and 9, you will find that they continue to work with Emily Swanson of Holy Cow to discern where God is calling the Presbytery to the future. They are also working with an ad hoc group to develop or revise the policies required of all councils in the church. These include an anti-racism policy, sexual misconduct policy, harassment policy, and child and youth protection policy. These will be presented and voted on at the August Presbytery meeting. This summer, the General Assembly of the PCUSA will be meeting in Salt Lake City, Utah. Commissioners from the Presbytery of West Virginia to this gathering will be Chris Kilbert, pastor of Rivalon Presbyterian Church in St. Albans, and Susan Perry, ruling elder at First Presbyterian Church in Logan. We will be commissioning them to their service to the larger church at this point in the meeting. In addition, Emma Rao, member of Highlawn Presbyterian Church in Huntington, will be attending the General Assembly as our Young Adult Advisory Delegate. She will not be able to be present with us and will be commissioned in abstention. The Stewardship Committee will report next. You'll find their written report on page 10. On pages 11 to 15, you'll find the Statement of Financial Position for the Presbytery for the first quarter of 2024. Chris Alford, the Financial Administrator Treasurer, will be reviewing this material as well as the information on pages 16 to 19 where you'll find the budget versus actual spending for the first quarter of the year. And then on pages 20 to 24, you'll find 2024 benevolence pledges and per capita assessments by church. Page 23 is the financial information for Bluestone Camp and Retreat. The Mission Committee report can be found on page 24. Their recommendation regarding the authoring will likely have been approved on the consent agenda. This committee oversees and awards hunger grants for direct food relief, administrative expenses, or development assistance, and mission grants which fund capital expenditures for a mission-related program. Updated guidelines for both hunger grants and mission grants can now be found at wvpresbytery.org. You will also find here information about grants that have been awarded so far this year. The Administration Committee report can be found on page 25. While they are not bringing any recommendations to this meeting, you'll find their information about the persons that have been hired recently. Leslie Bremer will be the part-time administrative assistant to the stated clerk. Some of you may remember Leslie from when she was the office administrator for the Presbytery. Kathy Willoughby-Weed has been hired as the Associate for Ministry to the Aged. You'll find a brief description of their responsibilities here. Following the Administration Committee report will be good news from the pews. This is a time for ruling elder commissioners to this meeting to share one way in which their congregation is engaged in ministry and mission so that those from other churches might glean some ideas to take back to their sessions or their congregations. If you are your session's ruling elder commissioner for this meeting and would like to share, please be prepared to do so. And again, remember to identify yourself and direct your remarks to the moderator using the microphone. Please note that this is not a time to advertise upcoming events. While the Bluestone Committee does not have a written report, they will be sharing plans and information for summer camp. The Committee on Representations report is then found on page 26. They are bringing a recommendation for the recording clerk of the presbytery who takes minutes during the meeting and for a member of the administration committee. As with all nominations, there will be an opportunity to make nominations from the floor for both of these positions. Please be aware, however, that before placing someone's name in nomination, 
they must have agreed in advance to serve if elected. On page 27, you'll find the report of the trustees who oversee the Presbytery's property. Last year, the Ruffner Memorial Presbyterian Church was dissolved, and efforts have been made to sell the building. The recommendation of the trustees is for funds to replace portions of the roof before listing the property for sale with a real estate agent. Committee on Ministry Report can be found on pages 28 to 30. They are recommending that the Presbytery appoint an administrative commission to inquire into the life, ministry, and viability of the Alderson Memorial Presbyterian Church in Welch. The Committee on Ministry and the Relations Committee have both sought to contact the church without success, and they are hopeful that the Administrative Commission will be able to visit with the congregation and share with these committees about the ministry and mission of the church. The purpose, composition, and work of this commission can be found with a recommendation. In the information section of their report, you will find that they have appointed moderators for churches without pastoral leadership and liaisons to work with churches in pastoral transition. The list of approved installed pastor compensation reports and renewal covenants for commission pastors, stated supply pastors, and lay supply pastors are there also. You will find their, their exit interviews have been completed with pastors who recently retired and six-month interviews with pastors newly installed in the presbytery. Several committees have only written reports for this meeting. On page 30 is the report of the Nurture Committee. In it, you will find information about the resource center that is located in Bream Memorial Presbyterian Church in Charleston. The committee is also looking into the possibility of a children's retreat. A survey was sent to congregational leaders in late March, but if you missed it, please contact Claire Butler, chair of the Nurture Committee, or me, so that you can complete it. You will also note that next year's date for Festival of Faith will be March 22, 2025. The Relations Committee report can be found on page 31. They have been attending session records reviews to connect with clerks of sessions and are continuing to reach out to congregations. If you someday find a voicemail from someone on the committee, please reach out and return it. If you'd like a friendly visit from them this year, please let them know. They'd love to get to know you better. You'll also find information on grants for collaboration with other churches in the Presbytery in their report. Vocations Committee on pay, report on page 33 has a recommendation to approve ruling elders to preside at communion in their churches of membership. This will most likely have been approved on the consent agenda. The Presbytery offers the training preparation program for ruling elders to preside at communion in their church of membership at least once a year. If you'd like more information on this, please reach out to me. Under the information section, you will find that the committee continues to review and pursue McClinic loan repayments and the uses of those funds. They also continue to support those who are inquirers in the process of becoming ministers of word and sacrament and those who are in the authorized lay preacher commission pastor preparation programs. At the end of the committee reports, any new business that was submitted to the stated clerk prior to the lunch break will be considered. Following that, or if there is no new business, the moderator will adjourn the meeting with prayer. The meeting may be over. You'll be on your way home. Please remember there's some work we still hope you'll do. First, on page 34, you'll find an evaluation form. This will also be sent to you by email after the meeting. Please either take the time to print it and bring it with you and complete it and turn it in before you leave the meeting, or respond online. The leadership team takes your comments very seriously as they plan for future meetings. Also, please be ready to report at your next session meeting the work that we've been about on May 16th so that Presbytery and session can celebrate being part of a connectional church. I look forward to seeing you on May 16th. In the meantime, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at Susan underscore Sharp underscore Campbell at Hotmail.com.